Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. I'm joined here by Zachariah Butler, who is a keen advocate of the remote duels. So uh, that's basically what he's here to talk to us about today. Um, just before we get started, I do want to round off a little bit about what he's done, who he is, um, and I'm sure he can explain some more himself in just a moment, but um, I got to know a little bit about him through his TCG uh, Player Infinite articles. Um, I'd seen him on a couple of Facebook groups, and uh, we've got talking and things like that. Uh, his TCG Player Infinite articles, I would like to, men to mention a personal favourite of mine is the, the one about Yu-Gi-Oh! Mental Health. Uh, hits home with me big time. Um, I haven't really had a chance to discuss that on the channel yet, but it's something I will cover at some point soon. Um, but I, I think it's really important to mental health and all that. But that's uh, that's us getting sidetracked a little bit. So uh, yeah, there'll be a link to those in the description if you want to go and check those out. He also has his own YouTube channel, which is up and coming, uh, Z Butler TCG. I will put a link on the screen if I can remember to, but I will definitely put one in the description. So you definitely should go check him out, hit him up with a sub. So um, before we get started, I do just want to explain. So basically, he's a huge advocate of, uh, of remote dueling in North America in particular. Um, um, which it hasn't been met with the same level of fondness over here in Europe. Now, I was part of the, the first sort of test run, if you will, of the tournaments online. We don't talk about how badly I did in that. Although technically I top eighted, so we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. We won't talk about how it doesn't really count, but that's not the point. Um, we got into top eight of the first remote duel, uh, and they've gotten to do quite well from a, a viewer perspective. But uh, Mr. Butler over here is quite a keen advocate for getting them going sort of uh, more frequently, I should say. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your interest in the remote duels and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, well, I, I mean, you hit it pretty much, the, uh, hit the nail on the head. I'm Zach Butler. Uh, I'm a weekly columnist for TCG Player. Um, I have a, a very small YouTube channel that is mostly just like an outlet for uh, article ideas that I didn't feel like writing. Um, I just like love playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And I have ever since it, ever since like the initial release back in 2002, I have played consistently that entire time. Um, yeah, and I, I really, I'm a big fan of remote duels because as, as much fun as it is playing on like unofficial online simulators, uh, I, I feel like playing with actual cards and having actual discussions with people is just so much more important. And there's so much more to the game than just the cards themselves, like even how people are handling their cards and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I really feel like remote duels are great. And it's also just a good way to like have cards be worth money. Yeah. <laughs> like, if, if, if everyone has access to everything, then nothing is worth any. Like there's just no reason to buy Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yeah. So being able to actually participate with real cards gives you a reason to go out and still buy product and support your stores mm -hmm. and, you know, by proxy then support the game, which is all really good stuff of course of course and yeah i could definitely see that side of it um so i mean in, in general your experience seems to have been quite good what we'll talk about quickly is um the europeans view on this because obviously it's a little bit contrasting to the north american one um and i think it's just worth raising the point so generally speaking here when the whole remote door thing was um was sort of bandied around in the first place um i got invited to do some bits with uh konami about that before the official thing happened um and largely when the whole the first server was released it was met with a lot of pessimism from the european side of things um a lot of people talking about how easy it is to cheat and that kind of thing and i like to think that the people i'd be playing against my locals wouldn't cheat against me um but you know i guess that i'm sure there are some locals where they have players that that are less uh less well behaved let's say um now i personally really really enjoyed my experience of it um it was definitely a beta test there was definitely some things that needed to be changed and worked on it seems like they've worked on those things they've been really really good um but overall it seems like the americans have a really good experience of it so so what is it that i mean obviously we know that you're saying it's good because you can kind of read a little bit more and that kind of thing but what do you think maybe it is that they're missing that we're not getting is there anything that you can think of that maybe we're not taking away from this that that we should maybe look at things a little bit differently uh well before i get to that i wanted to address like it, it like so the initial test of it was not met with skepticism just from europeans there was a lot of uh tcg na 
issues to like a, a lot of the players cited the same issues where you know players would cheat and stuff like that mm -hmm. um and uh, i was one of the most outspoken people in saying that if you're going to cheat in a remote duel you're probably going to cheat in real life anyway so it's it, it, it's no different mm -hmm. um and it's actually much harder to cheat if you're paying attention it's much harder to cheat than people think and and a lot of what's happened too in the time from like that initial beta test and like the mention of it until even recently is uh, a lot of Konami employees taking a lot of feedback from players like myself. Um, Cause I have my own private discord server that I, I discussed with a couple of close friends who are very uh, in tune with like the public perception and stuff mm -hmm. about issues. So like one of the examples is, you know, like off camera, you can have all these cards. You can switch out. Well, that's part of why in the best pack, best practices guide, we have like a you have to keep your cards visible at all times. Mm -hmm. and like uh, a good example was this past weekend at New York Comic Con, players found out that one of the things that came up was that if your side deck was not face down on the table at the beginning of game one, you don't have a side deck. Yeah, you're playing as if you don't have one, and so that was to make sure that there was no cheating. Mm -hmm. um, I think. What happened was that, for from my perspective, is that, and, and this goes like, th th I mean, this goes a little bit deeper than just Yu-Gi-Oh. But so, European territories handled uh, the whole virus issue better than the Americas did, mm -hmm. just as a whole. So you guys were able to actually start having sanctioned tier one play mm -hmm. in person. Yeah. And because of that, I don't think there was any reason for players to really want to participate in remote duels as heavily and so that kind of like decentivized stores in trying to like pioneer being able to do that i think now that there's like a second larger wave hitting you guys it'll probably become more popular since i imagine organized play will become frozen mm -hmm. and so then you know in order for stores to survive they have to they have to do that yeah so i think that's part of it and then on top of that um we had a few of like the bigger stores in our country really become very vocal advocates for it. Um, like core TCG was like the first store that really like just went crazy and was like, we're having tournaments four days a week and you can do them anywhere in the country and we will ship it out to you if you participate X amount of times. And that was great. And now grandmaster games has them seven days a week and other stores have them three or four times a week. So it gives players a lot of opportunity to play, which is nice. Yeah, and and so how are you finding the whole transition over to it, just in general? Because I, I assume you don't have any kind of, um, I assume you don't have any physical ways to play at the moment. Um, I, I, so I actually just moved out to the East Coast. I live in New York now, and we are, there are a couple stores out here who have unsanctioned tournaments, and I have just chosen not to participate. Mm -hmm. Um, but the transition was really easy, because when, when the idea was first pitched, me and a close friend of mine from back in Minnesota, Nick, both started doing remote dual playtesting sessions uh, just to kind of get used to the idea, and we really liked it. So then it was just like a natural transition to really just going and doing tournaments with it. It's, it's a lot easier, I think, than a lot of players think it would be. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, there, there's like discussions about like, well, the cost of equipment and stuff, and most of the time, the equipment you buy is like a fifteen to twenty-five dollar gooseneck clamp off of Amazon, which is like the cost of less than one secret rare ash blossom. So, <laughs> if you can yeah. afford to bling out your deck, you can afford to play in a remote duel. And then on top of that, if you look at it like I did, uh, you actually end up saving money by doing them because you don't pay for travel to and from your local. Like gas is not gas is not free. So you pay less on that, and then you don't have to pay for drinks and stuff while you're out. Mm -hmm. So you're actually just saving money, and it's it's been really great. I think it's a great experience. Yeah, and it, it does seem like that that's the kind of uh, the way it's been perceived. Again, I, you know, I'm only seeing it from uh, the more recent standpoint of it. Definitely seems to have been taken with a, a much more open view. I would say in general by North American players. I know you're saying that that's not the case. That's just um, just how I've seen things, at least. Um, well, part of it was that the uh, the remote dual invitational, um, all sixteen players, uh, outside of Sam, that I know of, I think basically all sixteen though, 
have been participating in various remote dual local tournaments like Shunping and Ryan mm -hmm. were two that really stuck out like Shunping played in like seven days a week when I was like there was a, a two week period where I was I was like boot camping to play Yu-Gi-Oh again for like a serious time because I'd kind of taken like a back like a step back and just focus on my articles um, and there was like a week where I played in a remote duel every day and Chunping was in like those same tournaments like every day and I was like wow that's that's really good to see because then you know you see like these bigger name players and a lot of people have that mentality where they don't want to be the ones to try something mm -hmm. so if they see it's, it's like a herd mentality so then they see all these successful players doing it and they're like okay well it's probably not so bad yeah and so that helped a lot I do think it did actually. I think you've hit the nail on the head there with that particular part. Um, one of the issues that I think that we had when we did our remote, our remote dual, uh, our re remote dual invitational, was that we were all uh, Yugi tubers, and of course the old um, the old adage goes about us having a lack of ability in the game, um, which I did no favors to myself for. But let's not get into that one. So. I think that that was one of the things that maybe hindered us a little bit. Although we did have one or two notable players. Of course, we have Farfa in there, and uh, Zulu did quite well, I think. Spieler, who absolutely splattered me in round two, uh, I think he went on to win the whole thing um, and was in the most recent one, if I remember rightly. Um, and I think that getting those extra big names on there has certainly, I think, helped snowball things a little bit, that people are a little bit more optimistic about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um so I, I think that this most recent Invitational will also help with Europe too, mm -hmm. uh, in that they ha involved like Raphael and Bowden, mm -hmm. um, which was really good to involve some more serious players to, just to show like you, you can have serious tournaments. And like this past weekend at Comic-Con, they had, and they had three Attack of the Giant cards all over Remote Duel. And they'd mm -hmm. done that for the previous Comic-Con too. And I was like, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, people who really enjoy doing, like, a serious tournament get to play against all of these, you know, very good players without having to leave home, which is kind of nice, too, I think, for some of the more, like, aspiring players who don't necessarily have the confidence to travel mm -hmm. um, or even just the ability to travel. Like, I'm, I, I am under no illusion that I'm not a very fortunate person in that I have been able to attend essentially every YCS and WCQ that I have felt like going to in the past seven years. Mm -hmm. um, like not everybody is able to do that. And mm -hmm. so now people are able to do that. Or like uh, one cool thing that I, I mentioned is that, uh, so I primarily have been playing in core TCGs, remote dual servers and grandmaster games servers. And uh, those are two stores I've never actually even physically been to. Mm -hmm. But uh so the owner of Grandmaster Games is a very good friend of mine, and I love to support their store. And Core TCG had gone above and beyond to help make sure that I enjoyed myself on their tournaments, so I really appreciated that. And so now I have extra stores that I can help support, which is kind of cool because, you know, if, like, your local store doesn't do it, but you found another store that's willing to help you out and support doing them, then you're like, okay, well, then I'll just give my, my money to the store, which is great. Yeah, for sure. So it, it, it's like a it's it's like a mutually beneficial relationship, I think. Yeah, everyone's a winner. Yeah, except for the poor people who have to run the tournament, like those, those poor staff. <laughs> yeah, they have the worst job of their life, like having to answer some of those questions. I'm like, I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so okay, so that that, that leads us quite nicely onto my last couple of questions I have for you, on, and just want to hear your thoughts on. Um, so where do we think that this stands, Konami versus uh, online Sims? So, uh, I have to phrase this very carefully because yeah. I'm privy to certain things that I that most are not. So uh, one thing that I understand that I feel like a lot of players don't is that Yu-Gi-Oh! is not run by just Konami. Mm -hmm. It is actually run by four different companies yep. Yep. that all have a partnership, uh, Shueisha and Konami being the two biggest ones, and you've got Studio Dice, and I can't remember the last one. And the issue that comes up is that between those four, it's very hard, it's very hard to get anything done. And so remote duels are Konami's way of being like, we can't get an official simulator that we know everybody wants. We're going to at least do this for you guys. Please don't hate us. Yeah. Because like, even when it comes to like reprints, a good example is blood Mephist. We can't have blood Mephist reprinted because one of the other three companies doesn't want to have it reprinted. And so 
That's why it's an expensive prize card, despite being arguably the worst one ever printed. Next <laughs> to, like, it's terrible. Firewing Pegasus. <laughs> <laughs> but so, like, I think that it's a wonderful way to do that. And it's also a good way to incentivize players to continue buying product, mm -hmm. which I don't think that anyone, if you had told me five, six months ago in like the heat of COVID that we would be at a point where like buyout culture in Yu-Gi-Oh is at its all time high, I would not believe you. <laughs> yeah, US but market somehow, is crazy. Somehow the US market is going more insane than ever. And part of it is that, you know, they've done like better reprints, better rarities. They're really stepping up like on the art and everything. But also part of it, I think, is that people are just bored. Yeah, for sure. And so it almost helps the secondary market to have remote duels because then they're able to use those cards that they've bought. Whereas like in a, in a simulator, you're just, I mean, you're just staring at a screen and you're not holding cards. You don't get to laugh and joke around with people either too, which is also part of it. Like you get to actually build relationships with people, which is one of my favorite parts of playing. Mm -hmm. And I think it quite okay. easily Konami could have just gone, well, Hey guys, uh, sorry, you know, this whole virus thing sucks um but we're not going to do anything for you you can just play dual links and uh, they didn't do that they've gone out of their way to actually at least try to make an effort to make something work and and it goes to show because um you know early op opportunities and attempts at this one you know perfect by any means but they've continued to work in it and it definitely does seem to be an improving product overall the whole uh, remote dual scenario shall we say well that that's part of um I think that that is part of something that the not just the player base, but people in general have to come to terms with is that everything is being learned and established in real time. Mm -hmm. So like we are establishing better practices for remote duels in real time. Like we're figuring out ways to make sure that it's safer for both players to ensure that they get to have a fun, fair opportunity to play as we go like some of the practices have had to be updated or like remote duels are the like they have their own exclusive forbidden section now for just remote duels because like you can't resolve certain cards correctly and like that's not something that you know seven eight months ago anyone thought would be required but that's i feel like that shows a very heads up um like hands-on approach to things too is that they they understand that things have to they have to update things and change them and make them better as they go. Yeah, and it's also helped that they. Uh, it, it, I think it's also helped that they were willing to do uh, OTS packs as a um, like a, a purchase incentive as well. Because mm -hmm. um, then that, that 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 doubles up. Like you can get OTS packs, and then you also buy your product, which then you can use a remote tool to win more OTS packs, and it's just like a, a, it it feeds itself which mm -hmm. is great because like i personally a month ago like literally opened up like a hundred uh ots packs in like a month Jeez. from just winning them and i was like this is great it doesn't seem so bad abyss dweller in the world <laughs> you can never have too many ulti abyss dwellers you can when you're me cause I have none now. <laughs> that's fair but, enough you know like that that's great or so like right now um ots 14 just came out and now people are able to really start going crazy getting those. And we have Christmas coming up, which is going to be another awesome opportunity because people will be home more. And so, you know, you want to go play in your local store and, you know, it's not safe to do so. So this is at least a way you get to at least, you know, like keep up with your friends and play and, yeah, you know, continue enjoying the card game that we all, to various degrees, love. Mm. And on that note of OTS 14, actually, can I just say, that's a really, really good set. They've done a really there good is, job with it. The thing I was actually the least impressed with, and it wasn't even because of, like, the art flub, was Nibiru. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, of everything, that was the thing that I was like, oh. Okay. Which says a lot, really. <laughs> well, like, Toon Kingdom was great, and I think that everyone who complains about that doesn't understand how popular Toons are. Yeah. Super Poly was great. Every Super was pretty insane, and I was like, okay, this is overall, like, an insane pack. And mm. when, like, the thing that I'm the least impressed with is the most competitively viable card, that's a good thing. Yeah, that definitely the says an awful lot. Amazing. Yeah, they did a good job. Indeed. So, 
so I've got to you guys at Konami. Yes, sir, definitely. So I've got one final question for you. Um, so what do you think about remote duels in the long run? Where does it go from here? Does it remain once uh, physical games return as a whole, or do we think that it will die off? I So this is where my optimism and like what I actually think are going to happen are two very different things. Mm-hmm. I would like to see it continue. I think it is a fantastic way to help players in more rural areas support stores and it is a fantastic way to help players whose stores are not necessarily the best support those really strong OTS stores because there have been stores that uh, I had never even heard of pre remote duel that now I I will go out of my way to order cards from Mm -hmm. Uh, a big one is the side deck it's owned by uh, a judge in North America David Abram the Abram family is amazing uh they went out of their way to make sure that I had a really good remote dual setup because, like, my tripod died and stuff, and they sent me one just for free, mm-hmm. um, even though I'd never played for them before or anything like that. And they were just like, we just want to make sure you can enjoy it. So that's great. That's Unfortunately, awesome. Unfortunately, I think what will likely happen is that it will die off because people will just be more incentivized to go play in real life, which makes sense. But I think that it will always be something that in the back of everyone's mind they can do. So, like, for myself, for example, I don't use unofficial simulators at all. Mm-hmm. Um, outside of, like, minimal research purposes, you will never see me online unless I'm just, like, doing something for an article. Yeah. And I do that just, just because I don't want to support. It's like pirating music. I don't want to do that. Um, as great of a resource as those simulators are, I just won't use them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think what might happen is for a lot of groups of players with like their playtesting groups and everything, uh, it'll be a great way to uh, like playtest in a more efficient manner. Yeah. And I think with bigger teams where people are like spread across the world and that kind of thing, it makes sense to kind of try to embrace the whole thing of, you know, we're more connected than we ever have been before. And I mean, we used to do Skype duels when I was a kid, but they were just terrible because it was, you know, on like MSN or whatever. And they were just awful. We didn't have the quality cameras like our phones are like 4K now, which we can set up as webcams. Um, You know, everyone's got a decent setup in the palm of their hands. So I do think that we should maybe potentially be embracing this a little bit more and particularly for competitive players. I mean, I can play test with people the other side of the world now, which is not something, you know, outside of those unofficial sims that I could do before. Exactly. This is going to sound awful. I actually have to go. <laughs> okay, that's all good. It's all good. Sorry well, about that. I just realized I have to go. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's all good. We were cutting it tight anyway. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. I just got to run. <laughs> okay, man. It well, was a great chat, though. Thank you very much, and I'll, uh, I'll roll you out on my own. Okay, man. Okay, awesome. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye. Okay, so that was Zach Butler, TCG. Uh, so he joined me, of course, for that quick chat about remote duels. We were kind of tight because uh, he actually had a remote duel event that starts in, I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes. So, uh, yeah, we had to shoot off and it ran on a little bit longer than planned. But I really appreciate you guys listening. And hopefully you've made it this far. You've enjoyed it enough to hit subscribe. Definitely go check out his channel as well. Uh, he does some really fantastic bits. And, of course, check out his articles. There'll be a link in the description to those as well. Thank you very much for coming along, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.